folks. Shannon here, working on my uh, 1970 Airstream Overlander International uh, land yacht, um, named her Mildred, if you haven't uh, seen the other videos. Um, it's kind of a muggy, nasty day, and I've got a few little troubleshooting things I've got to work out with my with a couple of the lights that I've put in for my electrical, but I wanted to give you a quick overview of what I did and what I had installed and how I installed it. I uh, was going to do a play-by-play, -play, but that video would have been way too long. So I'm just going to give you the rough showing of, not the rough, but give you the detailed showing of what I've got in. I do have a couple things that I need to add. I'm going to add two more batteries, so I'm waiting to get a battery box situation. Um, but I want to go ahead and add those now as opposed to later, because I just started with two, um, just to get me by uh, for money reasons. Um, and we'll go from there. So I'm going to get the camera turned around and show you what I've got. Thanks. Okay, this is, I'm going to start with my control panel. So what I have is the progressive dynamics. I'm using my phone as a flashlight here, or as a light source. So what I've got is the power uh, progressive dynamics uh, power converter. It also has a charger. This is the PD4045KA. Um, it's got a nice look to it. Of course, you can see there's my control panel, um, what's what. And then it just sits right on the front, covers up real nicely so it's not, uh, and it's not too big. This is like 12 by 10 or 12 by 9 or something like that um, from the front. So I went with this one because it was small. It gave me what I needed, but it also, um, you know, looked good from the front. Um, I got this one from uh, Vintage Trailer Supply. They always have really nice, you know, nice prices and stuff. So what I've got going on here, this is the converter uh, in here, the converter and charger. So this, of course, turns my um, uh, AC to DC power. Uh, here you've got the battery connections that come in. These are the wires that are connecting the converter um, that come pre-wired, which is really nice. Uh, and then, of course, the um, control panel for my DC power. Uh, this one, the top two, sorry, got to get the, my assistant out of the way. Miss Daisy loves to help. Anyway, so this is the, um, once again, the DC power. It comes with these two red wires, uh, and I couldn't find anywhere in the manual where it told me where those were, what those were, so I had to look it up, but it's got my, um, two 30 amp breakers, or amp, 30 amp fuses, and then I went ahead and went with all 15s for the rest, just to keep it simple. Um, and then uh, loaded accordingly. Uh, I've got two 30 amp breakers up here, or um, fuses up here, and then you get into uh, the um, AC panel. Um, it they kind of, they started it for you uh, in that the converter was already connected. So I just so of course it's easy just to you know keep doing what they what they had with your bus bar. Um, so my neutrals are here and then the grounds are in the back. Wiring comes in from the back. So this is my 30 amp main. I have my 15 amp breaker dedicated to my converter. The the 20 amp went to um, my GFI. So I've got my wiring for my kitchen and my bathroom plug. And then that gave me a little bit higher amperage if I needed it for anything else. My 30 amp breaker for my air conditioner, which I don't have on right now because I don't uh, don't need it. It's nice and cool outside, and it needs a little work, so I'm, I've waited. But it's all wired up. I've got another 20 amp. This is going to one side of the kitchen area that has a, uh, two plugs, and then one that will run the convection oven. Uh, little toaster oven thing that I'm going to install instead of a regular stove. I just don't bake that much. Um, this one is the 15 amp is the plugs on the other side of the camper uh, RV and it's uh, TV just general plugs that kind of stuff and then this is running to one plug inside but runs off the um, can charge some pretty heavy duty stuff simply or plug in because it's the 20 amp but it also is going to two plugs that I put inside the uh, outside access hatches so that I can run power tools or anything that I want to run outside when it, you know when I'm chilling out and cooking and that kind of stuff so that's that part um, so you know your average not easy to get in and out of but um, you get creative and figure out how to do it 
Uh, and your breakers, of course, are the typical slot type when you put them into a, um, or set up when you put into a household uh, circuit box where it just has has a little ledge so that it pops in. And then the two, it has um, uh, the power situation that comes out of the back. Now, these breakers are tandems. So this is actually one actual breaker. It came with a 15 and a 20 a 30 and a 20, a 15 and a 20. And you can buy these in any setups that you want or just put a single in like I did with my 30 amp breaker. Okay, so let's go inside. I'm going to pause so we don't have so much movement on you, and I'll be right back. All right, so this is the um, one of the hatches of my front bench area. I have another video on how I've got this all set up, so I won't bore you, bore you with that here. But this is the back of my control panel. Um, it's a little dusty. It gets crazy dusty around here. Anyway, so over here you can see I've got my bus bar, and this is all of my DC uh, ground wires coming in, and then all of my DC positive wires coming in. So that's basically running my lights, my USB charger, a couple other things, but for the most part, that's just going to be lights. Um, and then, so I've just kind of got them all, they're all labeled, but I've got them kind of stacked and tied up over here. I've got a few wires I want to shorten and clean up a little bit. But they're just tucked over there for now until I can, until I decide uh, how I want to clean that up. But these are the DC wires coming into the back of the unit. You can see the 230 amp and then the uh, rest black, the 15 amp wires that came in. And that runs to that uh, strip that we saw from the front. And then here are my uh, wires coming in. These are 6 gauge wires, which gave me 65 amps. I will probably upgrade these to a larger, but right now that's what fit in that hole there to get to the connection on the front. So that's what I've started with. And to see how that works, I just was having some issues getting the bigger ones through there. So, And these, of course, will trail around to my battery that are just around the corner, and I'll show you those in a second. These are all of my AC power lines uh, coming in. They have their setup, various breakers that they go to. And then this one here that you see is my refrigerator. Now I've just got a residential refrigerator, just a college size. I didn't go with the propane um, DC AC power one. I just didn't feel like for me it was necessary. Um, and because it draws so little amperage, it only pulls one amp or uh, I think that runs into about 120 watts. Uh, it doesn't pull much power. So going from this setup here, you get into my inverter. Now the inverter is a, sorry it's upside down, is an Ames Power pure sine wave inverter with a 55 amp charger. It's a thousand watt continuous use um, wattage with a 2000 watt surge on it. So it's plenty for me for now. Ultimately I'm going to upgrade, but they get a little pricier when you get higher when you go into the pure sine wave. And I'll do another video possibly on why I went with the pure sine wave as opposed to the modified sine wave, but there's plenty of those out there. So I would recommend checking those out before you commit to which one you want to go with. Um, here you can see this is the, um, it's telling me that my battery is full. Now because this is a charger and also have a charger on my um, control panel, right now the inverter is doing all the work. Uh, I am on shore power so it's not that big of a deal but uh, my inverter is, it seems to have been take has taken over my charging situation which is totally fine this is actually a better quality one then that little yellow light that you see back there that is saying that I am on AC power and that the inverter is essentially the internal transfer switch has turned it off and then I do have a manual switch um, turn off here in case I decide I need to m turn it off manually and that'll be um, wired up to my control panel up top uh, that's going to be visible. These are the uh, input and output so this is my um, power coming in from my control panel into the input you can see the neutral uh, power and ground and then it goes the opposite direction for the output so that's wired directly into my refrigerator. Now because this refrigerator is pulling so much less amperage than I had initially planned or thought it would, I am going to be going, uh, I'm going to be adding an additional plug just for standard boondocking that'll run off of that plug. Um, I'm just going to piggyback it. And then that'll give me at least a couple plugs that I can use 
uh, while boondocking. Uh, the battery will stay charged ultimately because I am going to add some solar panels. So if I'm, you know, a little bit um, careful, I won't have to worry about too much about power running out. So that's what I have there. Now we're going to jump over, excuse the pivot, to the back side of the inverter. Let's see if I can get in here. And then I'll go back to the battery situation. So you see my positive uh, power connection run in here for the inverter. Now that's running into a, I went with the Windy Nation um, uh, fuse box. Uh, this is a 150 amp fuse. This particular one recommends a 100 watt. Um, but they said because I already had it, this would be fine. And then going from there, coming up and connecting. Um, sorry. It's a little tricky trying to get in these little tight spaces. I apologize for not having done this when I had the top off. But I changed things around so it didn't work. Or it didn't apply anymore. Anyway, so this is my positive cable coming to my battery, and then back here is running from my negative on the back of the inverter over to the other end for the negative. Now, I went with uh, getting into the batteries. I went with the 6-volt golf cart batteries. It gave me higher amperage hours for boondocking. Um, like I said, it's going to help that I'm going to have solar panels at some point maybe even grab a generator but right now this is uh, the solar panels is going to be my backup um, and then of course I have a w cable here uh, this one's blue because it just was the original one that came with the trailer so I just kept it There's nothing wrong with it um, and this is coming from my trailer connection now you can't see it because it's underneath that little box back here in the back all of my trailer wires are uh, back there and um, there is a 50 amp fuse in there as well that will um, that comes between the trailer and my batteries because you always want to have a fuse between the two just in case there's a uh, between a power source uh, and its usage. So that's my 50 amp there. This is my wi positive wire coming from my batteries into the uh, to my control panel, and then you see down there is another. 50 amp fuse between the positive and the control panel and then there's my negative wire there um, and these are nice and contained now like I said I went with the 6 volt golf cart batteries these are a little bit taller than your typical battery that you're going to get in your RV so unless you're building you know building your box yourself or wherever it's going you might have to do some modifications to fit these new batteries if you choose to go this way. Other than the AGM, which I'd like to get in the future just for cleanliness reasons, these are just, um, you can just get so much more amperage hours out of it, which is great. And they're about, without having a core refund, they're about 150 bucks a piece. Uh, and the others, I think, are running, you know, considerably more than that. I can't even remember because the sticker shock made me not look. Anyway, to get the 12 volts that I needed, I've got these wire uh, connected in series, so it's from your positive, this is my negative, over to the positive of the other one. Now I'm not doubling my amperage hours on this right now, and each battery is 235 amp hours, so between the two I'm still only getting 235 amp hours uh, because I'm not currently in parallel. So I need to get, I will get them in parallel when I add the next two. That'll double my amperage hours, so that'll get me about 400 usable amp hours. Um, and then, but I'll do another video when I connect that. So as you can see in this box, I've actually got plenty of space. So right now I've got the two, I don't have them in, um, in as deep of a, uh, battery pan as I want, but this is a, just a boot tray that I already had. So I wanted to make sure I had something underneath them for now. And as you can see, I've got tons of space to add two more batteries. I'm going to add them down on this end um, but for now that's where they are and when I do move them down I'm gonna have to disconnect that fuse from the uh, floor and move it further down just because this cable is only a 19 inch cable so I'll get that moved all of this will shift down to the front battery will be right about here and that will give me tons of space um, to add batteries down here and then I'll have the all the um, other half of the bench will be I may not move it too far just for balance reasons but the whole other half of the 
uh, area down here is storage. Now you can see here, this is where my negative is coming in, and this is the neutral wire coming in from the truck trailer um, uh, charging situation. That's my negative coming from my inverter. And these this red and black cable here, these are um, the wires that are come in from my solar. Now, I don't know when I'm going to get my solar connected, but um, I've already got it wired in, so if that's all good, all I have to do when I get the panels is just connect everything. So that is this uh, connection at this point, or my electrical at this point. And so far, so good. Okay, so that's a general rundown of what I have. Um, of course, I'm not a licensed electrician, so please make sure you get somebody that is to help you with this. Um, there's some great videos on YouTube, but it doesn't cover everything, um, as I found out the hard way. And since I've been pretty much using uh, <laughs> YouTube to help me get through the things I didn't know or make the decision to do a video of my, of my own on something because I couldn't find what I needed, um, it's, it's a lot of help, but you still need to make sure in a licensed electrician or somebody that knows electrical stuff really, really, really well um, can help you. I've got a few little things I'm going to have to troubleshoot because I've got some lights that I think probably connections got disconnected when I put the insulation in and I made the mistake of not checking them first. And now I have to figure out how to get wires to places that are now behind walls I can't get behind. So... Um, be sure and check everything to death before you start um, covering things up. And good luck. If you have any questions, just let me know. I'm happy to help. My email is on my channel. And feel free to email me or check me out on Instagram um, where I'm documenting the stuff that doesn't require a video. And I uh, hope to see you in the future. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.